War Thunder has a huge variety of air-to-ground weapons. Let's take a look at how to actually use them. First things first. If you find this guide useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I almost never ask, and even if you completely ignore the rest of my content, it really helps me out. Anyway, this video is going to give you a tutorial on understanding and using air-to-ground weapons in War Thunder. I'm presenting this in a verbose format so that a person who knows almost nothing about this can come away from the video with a basic enough understanding to use these weapons in the game without being completely confused. I'll be covering a lot of detail, so even veteran players will probably find some new information here. This tutorial is going to focus on air-to-ground weapons deployed from fixed-wing aircraft, and I'm not going to be going into any of the helicopter stuff. That'll be its own tutorial at some point. I'm going to cover each type of weapon and how to use it, and there are chapter breaks at the bottom of the video. The first thing we have to do is talk about some keybinds. To start off, we want to make sure that we have at least the following keybinds set. Drop Bomb, Drop Bomb Series, Fire Rocket, Fire Rocket Salvo, Fire Air-to-Ground Missile, Drop Guided Bombs, Weapon Lock Air-to-Ground, Lock Guided Bombs, Toggle Laser Designator, Toggle Cannon Ballistics Computer, Toggle Rocket Ballistics Computer, Switch Mission Bombing Target, Activate Target Point, and Deactivate Target Point. We'll be discussing these keybinds in each section later, but in particular, you want to make sure that the Activate Target Point and Deactivate Target Point are both set to convenient buttons, since you'll be using those constantly once you get to some of the more advanced guided weapons. Next, we're going to look at the advanced targeting features on an aircraft, and I'm always surprised at how many people don't know you can do this. If you want to check out the targeting features, use the X-ray view in the hangar and mouse over the pilot. This will show you the CCIP, CCRP, and other features that are available on your plane. But keep in mind that most of these features won't be available until pretty far up the tech tree. However, in arcade battles, all planes get the CCIP for their bombs. This view will also show you if your plane has features such as the laser designator, LDR, the sensor point of interest, SPI, an auto tracker, and info about the optical zoom on the targeting system, so on and so on. An important keybind you should also set is switch secondary weapon. If you're in a plane that is more than one type of weapon, for example, missiles and bombs, or two types of missiles at the same time, Switch Secondary Weapon will toggle which one is active when you want to target and fire. This is critically important, especially if you use overlapping keybinds for firing and dropping weapons. Just hit the keybind for Switch Secondary Weapon, and you'll see a little caret arrow next to your selected weapon on the top left portion of your HUD, and you'll see some text down at the bottom of the screen telling you what you have selected. Very helpful. Now let's look at the different types of air-to-ground weapons in War Thunder. First up is the CCIP for simple cannons and guns. CCIP stands for Constantly Computed Impact Point. If you turn on the CCIP using the keybind for Toggle Cannon Ballistics Computer, your crosshair will change to have a little X on it, and your plane's weapon system will automatically calculate where your guns are going to hit on the ground, taking your speed, altitude and distance to the target into account. This isn't a perfect calculation, but it's really close. Just get the crosshairs over the target and fire. Keep in mind that the CCIP does not account for gun convergence or vertical targeting, so if you have convergence set to a very short distance on a plane with wide spaced guns or like gun pods out on the wings, your shots might land on the sides of your target. Here's an example of correct usage from live gameplay. Oh, 
Next up are optical bomb sights. These are actually a bit more common at the lower tiers than the higher tiers, and almost all bombers have one. You get into your bomb sight view by hitting your keybind to change camera view, and from there it's exactly what it looks like, a crosshair that shows you where your bombs are going to land. It's not an especially accurate calculation, but it's generally good enough for hitting bases in air battles. If you want accurate drops, like close air support, you need to fly out at lower levels. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next up is the CCIP for bombs. When you have the CCIP for bombs up, you'll get a green circle on the ground beneath your plane that has a crosshair in it. This is going to show you where your bombs will land, and it also measures the accuracy of your drop. The tightness of the crosshairs shows the potential area for impact, taking into account your speed, altitude, and so on. If you want pinpoint accuracy, you generally need to be in a bit of a medium dive at low altitude or medium altitude, but even an inaccurate drop from high altitude is usually good enough for hitting a base in air battles. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next up is the CCIP for unguided rockets. Similar to guns, activating the CCIP turns the crosshair into a little X that calculates the impact point, accounting for speed, distance, the general ballistics properties of your rocket, and so on. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's far more useful than the little aiming tree you get by default. The CCIP is usually good enough to hit targets within about one and a half kilometers or so. You turn it on by using your keybind for toggle rocket ballistics computer, then maneuver the X over your target and fire. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next up are torpedoes. All torpedoes currently in War Thunder are unguided with no targeting aids, but I'm including them here for completeness. Before taking torpedoes out into battle, you should check the stat card and note the speed and altitude requirements for dropping your selected torpedo. For moving targets, you obviously want to drop the torpedo aiming a bit ahead of the target, keeping in mind the slow travel speed while for stationary targets or head-on targets, just aim for center of mass. Here's an example from live gameplay, and forgive me for getting shot down, it was a naval battle. Next up is the CCRP used with dumb bombs. CCRP stands for Continually Computed Release Point. You first designate a target, and then your plane's weapon system calculates when to drop your bombs for a hit, given your speed, altitude, and so on. First, you want to use your keybind for Activate Target Point 
while you're pointed generally towards the area you want to attack. This will turn on your sensor point of interest and put a little red square on the ground near where you're facing. You may have to make some minor adjustments and keep hitting the keybind to get the target where you want it. With the target set, you'll get a large green vertical line on your screen, and there will be a little circle near your crosshairs, along with a horizontal line above it. This measures your distance to the drop point, and the line moves down as you get closer. When it reaches the circle, you're at the drop point. The normal technique is to hold down your keybind for drop bomb or drop bomb series while the horizontal line is moving down towards the circle. The CCRP will block bomb release until you reach the drop point, and if you're holding the button down, it will auto-drop the bombs at the correct moment. If you want to use the CCRP to attack in base and air battles instead of a ground unit, there's an extra feature for that. Your plane's combat system comes pre-programmed with the location of the target bases, and you can hit your keybind for Switch Mission Bombing Target, which will automatically cycle through the available bases and target them for you with the sensor point of interest, the little red square. If at any point you need to clear out the sensor point of interest or turn the CCRP off, just use your keybind for Deactivate Target Point. Here's an example using the CCRP in live gameplay. Next, we have Manual Command Line of Sight Guided Bombs. This is our first type of weapon that can actually be guided into a target. When you get into your optical bombsight view, you're going to notice some extra white brackets near the center of your crosshairs. This shows the area on the ground that the bomb can steer into, based on your speed, altitude, and so on. Once you drop the bomb, you use your keybinds for the pitch and yaw axis for weapon aiming, to manually steer the bomb into the target. As you guide the bomb in, you'll notice the white brackets moving around. This shows you how the area you can hit changes as the bomb falls, steers, and uses potential energy. It might look confusing to watch in a video, but after you try it in a test flight, it'll make a lot more sense, and it's actually pretty intuitive. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next, we have Manual Command Line of Sight Guided Missiles. These are air-to-surface missiles that you steer manually using the same pitch and yaw axis keybinds as for the manually guided bombs. These can be quite difficult to use, as you'll usually need to zoom in and watch the smoke from the missile, or the flare that some of them have on the back, in order to help steer it in. You have to do this while flying the plane, and it takes time to get good with these. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next, we have radar beam riding guided missiles. This is often called semi-automatic command line of sight guidance. With these weapons, the missile has a radar sensor in the back that detects the radar beam from your plane, and it maneuvers to try and stay in the center of it. 
you guide the missile in by literally just aiming your plane at the target. As with manually guided missiles, these can be a little difficult to use, as you need to spot the target visually with only minimal zoom. But they're a little bit easier to aim, since you just fly your plane at the target instead of fussing around with axis keybinds. As a special note, these are a lot less accurate at longer ranges, as your plane's radar beam disperses out in front of you. When you have one of these missiles in the air, don't activate boresight targeting. This will radar lock the missile and send it out of control. Here's an example of normal usage from live gameplay. Next, we have three types of laser-guided missile targeting. I'm using the same KH-29L missile for all three demonstrations, so that the difference is very clear. All laser-guided weapons are semi-active, meaning that you have to keep the target lased until the weapon impacts. The first is fixed laser targeting, where your plane's targeting laser is fixed pointing directly forwards. This works almost identically to the radar beam riding guidance. You activate your keybind for toggle laser designator, which will make a little green circle appear out in front of you to show you where, where your laser is pointing. You then fire the missile and steer your plane to keep the little circle over the target. There's no auto targeting, no target tracking, and you have to keep flying directly at the target while the missile is in flight. Here's an example from live gameplay. Now we have basic laser guidance, where the plane has a targeting system that can steer the laser around a bit. This provides several benefits and it can be used from inside a targeting camera view or from the external view. While you're inside the targeting camera, your normal controls will aim the laser instead of flying your plane. This allows you to make really accurate missile guidance adjustments but it keeps you flying in a straight line while the missile is in flight and while you're inside the targeting camera. Additionally, with these targeting systems, you can use your keybind for activate target point from the external view to turn on the sensor point of interest and give you that little red square, the same as with the CCRP a few minutes ago. Then you just turn on your laser and fire. Most aircraft with this type of targeting will also have some limited degree to aim the laser off boresight, and once you have a point targeted, you can usually turn a little bit away from it without losing the target lays. The exact degree you can turn off the target varies from plane to plane, so try it in a test flight with yours. Here's an example from live gameplay. The last type are auto-tracking laser guidance systems. Some aircraft have this built in, others use a targeting pod for it. The key features are the inclusion of an auto-tracker, which allows you to target a moving object instead of a position on the ground, as well as a larger degree of off-boresight visibility so that you can turn and fly away from the target after firing on it. Also, these systems usually have a much better optical zoom function. Some of them can have thermal sights, which have their own keybind, and can be a significant advantage. Like the previous system, there are two ways to use this, from inside a targeting camera, or from the external view. From inside the targeting camera, 
Your controls will aim the laser, just like with the previous type of targeting, even though the user interface looks much different. You can fire from this view and aim the missile manually, like before, or you can select a target for the auto tracker. To select a target, move the aiming cursor over it, and then hit your keybind for activate target point. Your reticle will snap onto the target with a little square and track it if it moves, at which point you can activate your laser and fire your missile. You can change the view out of the targeting camera and the target will stay selected and lased. Keep in mind that this isn't foolproof and the target lock can be broken by trees, smoke, and so on. Targeting from the external view is also very familiar as you use your keybind for activate target point while aiming at the target. Again, the red SPI square and laser will snap to the target. It might take a couple of tries to get the target you want to snap. A special note is that if you select a spot on the ground near your target from the external view and then switch into the targeting camera, the camera will be looking at your selected point right when you get into it making it much easier to quickly find and lock the target you're looking for. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next are laser-guided bombs. These work exactly the same as laser-guided missiles with the same keybinds. Obviously, they don't have a rocket motor or anything, so they don't fire out ahead of your aircraft, and they take much longer to impact the target. They also usually have a far shorter horizontal range. One useful trick is after you've got the target selected and lased, use the CCIP and get the green circle near your selected target before dropping the bomb. This will greatly increase the chance of a hit, since it increases the odds that the bomb has enough kinetic energy with its steering in order to get onto the target you have selected. Another advanced technique, usually from higher altitude, is to drop your bomb without having any target selected, getting your CCIP generally in the area where you think some targets are, and then after your bombs are outbound, switching into your laser designator view and looking for targets to send the bombs onto. That works, and it can actually be pretty effective. Here's an example of laser-guided bombs from live gameplay. Next up are TV-guided missiles. These use what is called a contrast sensor in the nose that feeds the TV camera signal into some electronics that try to keep the weapon aimed in such a way that the TV picture stays centered, which guides the missile towards the center of the TV picture. A major limitation is that the TV-guided weapons generally don't work at night. These are fire-and-forget weapons with all of the targeting and guidance inside the weapon itself. Target selection is similar to laser-guided missiles, but you don't need to activate a laser. You can switch into the targeting camera, which is generally going to be the targeting camera of the weapon, not your plane, and then select a target using the fire air-to-ground missile keybind, which will spool up your weapon. Or you can do it from the external view. In either view, you activate the missile by pressing your keybind for fire air-to-ground missile, which will cause the target reticle to snap you don't use the activate target point keybind with these weapons. Keep in mind that some TV-guided weapons support target auto-tracking, and some do not. Those that don't will only attack a static position on the ground 
and you've got to hope your target doesn't move out of the way. One important note is that from the external view, when you spool up the missile with the first press of the fire air to ground missile keybind, you're going to get a little green square showing where the missile is looking. Once it's locked onto a target and ready to fire, the green square will get a little plus through the middle of it. Push your keybind a second time to fire the weapon. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next up are TV-guided bombs. These use the exact same technology as targeting TV-guided missiles. However, like laser-guided bombs, they obviously don't fly out in front of your aircraft, and they can take some time to impact, especially if you drop from high altitude. These are also fire-and-forget weapons, so after dropping one, you can turn off the target, fly past it, get shot down, whatever, and the bomb will continue to guide itself. Here's an example from live gameplay. Next are infrared guided missiles. It's easy to mistake these for TV-guided missiles. However, the sensor in these weapons uses a thermal imager instead of a TV camera. The primary advantage is that they can lock targets at night. The targeting interface can be somewhat of a hybrid between laser and TV targeting, and it depends on the aircraft carrying it rather than on the weapon. In more basic aircraft, it operates exactly like a TV-guided missile and has the same keybinds inside the targeting camera view that uses the missile's internal imager. You're going to be using your keybind for fire air-to-ground missile to spool up the weapon, select a target, and fire it. Other, more advanced aircraft have a targeting system or a targeting pod more similar to the advanced laser-guided weapons. Once inside the targeting camera, you can select a target using the Activate Target Point keybind in the camera view. However, you still need to push the Fire Missile button twice, once to spool up the weapon and actually lock the target, and a second time to fire. Here's an example from live gameplay. The last type of guided air-to-ground weapon are active radar missiles. The operation is very similar to active radar air-to-air -air missiles. In short, you need to select a target, which is going to be through a radar lock using your aircraft's radar, and then spool up the missile with your keybind to fire air-to-ground missile. Once your locked target gets a blinking square around it, it means that your missile is spooled up, locked on, and ready to fire. Your plane's targeting system will give some basic directional information to the weapon, which will then turn on its own small radar set once it gets a bit closer to the target. This is called the terminal homing phase. Currently in War Thunder, only one active radar ground attack missile exists, and it's actually an anti-ship weapon. The only reason you can't use this to attack tanks is because your plane's radar can only detect and lock ships. Since there aren't many ships in high-tier air battles anymore, their usefulness is limited. If and when Gaijin adds active radar anti-tank missiles, 
it's almost certain that they will operate the same way, except that the aircraft firing them will have a radar set that can detect and lock traditional ground targets and not just ships or boats. So keep an eye out for that. If you need more information about operating a radar system, please check out my separate tutorial on aircraft radar in War Thunder, with the only real difference being that the radar is going after naval targets instead of air targets. All of the basic concepts and keybinds will be the same. The last thing I want to mention is using air-to-ground weapons against aircraft. In short, it's absolutely possible, and it's a lot of fun. Laser-guided missiles in particular are popular to attack aircraft with, and I personally find that targeting aircraft is a bit easier from the external view instead of inside the targeting camera. The main caveat, and really this is a big limitation, is that it's much harder to actually get a target lock on a fast-moving jet aircraft with a laser targeter or a TV targeting system. And also, these weapons generally don't have a proximity fuse like an air-to-air -air missile, so they need a direct hit in order to score a kill. Plus, air-to-ground weapons generally don't have good maneuvering capabilities. They don't really need 30 Gs of pull to attack a slow-moving tank, which makes them incredibly easy for more advanced aircraft to avoid. In fact, it's even possible to get kills on helicopters with laser-guided bombs. Again, difficult, but sometimes you can get lucky, and air-to-ground weapons are generally immune to aircraft countermeasures. Well, that about wraps it up for air-to-ground weapons in War Thunder. Again, if you found this guide useful, please consider giving it a like and a sub. As always, thanks for watching.